it was still very dark inside of me. Sometimes in the middle of the night I woke up, there was still that emptiness and that darkness. Welcome today, I'd like to talk about why I haven't chosen suicide. Why I decided against suicide. The whole story actually began when I was about eight years old, but it was very, very unconscious. It was on a very unconscious level that it was kind of a negative thought or a feeling or so, I, don't, I can't really describe it and it's, yeah, lots of years in the past, so let's say it's kind of, it was kind of an unconscious thought, I would say. A negative thought, it was not that concrete, it, but it became more and more concrete the older I grew. It was so... I don't know, I think it was from the everyday life. I was, normally I was good at school and, you know, I, I said it in the video, but there was something else. I was happier before, when I was younger, when I was, yeah, before school, before I went to school, I was happy in, in the kindergarten and in the preschool time and, you know, but suddenly there was kind of a darkness inside of me, kind of not like the darkness outside. It's, it's more, you know, what, what they also mean in, in when they talk from darkness in philosophy. It's kind of an inner darkness. But I didn't know why. It was just there. And I couldn't see it concrete at this time. I was like melancholic, like I, I didn't enjoy the life. It was at this time in the age of eight or nine, I, I had no idea what to do in my free time. Friends, they had ideas what to do and I did it with them, but I had own ideas what to do. And when I was not with friends, when I was at home or so, I. I really hadn't an idea what to do. I had books and toys and all that stuff what children have today too. Okay, I didn't have a smartphone because there were no smartphones this time. But actually I had everything. I had need to not make ads here. Right? I had a Nintendo which is today uh, no more existing. So normally maybe some people still have ones like this. You know, I, I had the stuff, but I was not lucky. And I think also my parents were not guilty or so for that. Even when there was sometimes trouble or so, you know, that is normal. And some people from my experience now, I worked and I still work in, in this stuff. It is not the full work, not my main work, but it's kind of a volunteering where I help old people and go there for cleaning their house and there I learned a woman with, which was not that old but old enough that she could say that her mother already died and she said all the time that her mother is guilty for everything what went wrong in her life but her mother was already dead for 10 years and I said so your mother couldn't be guilty for your whole life. So, But she was of the opinion very strictly that her mother is responsible for everything what goes wrong. She can't forgive. And that's a big problem when you look back and when you had times of melancholy or, you know, when your life didn't went well. And yeah, there were maybe some people guilty for that and not you, but when you never forgive, you will never have a good life until the end. And this woman was, yes, not that young, was also old and I couldn't see any hope that she once will have a good life. She actually could because her mother died, which was, which 
she said was responsible for her negative stuff, whatever it is. But because she couldn't forgive this dead mother, she was still struggling with old stuff. And because she was hanging around in old stuff, she had the problems she still had. And that was the problem. And that's also the problem when someone first time is confronted with psychology. Most people are from diseases, but some others are just confronted because of interest. And the first thing when you learn upbringing, during upbringing, they did lots of mistakes. And the first thing people say is they are guilty. And that's a big problem because you must always see that they haven't known better. They also were up brought the same ways and they didn't know better. And their parents maybe have been in the Second World War or in other trouble. And therefore, they couldn't focus to upbring their children in good ways. They had to care for material stuff. This was their highest priority. And therefore, things ran as they ran. Things are as they are. It's past. But people always want to hold on to these negative stuff and say they are all guilty and so on. They can't forgive all their life and therefore they can't develop. They really can't develop. There is no personal growth, even if they try and to, they try to learn something through psychology or neuroscience. It doesn't bring something for them when they just fell in that mode of blaming others and so that's a big one. And that was very important to say here now, because when I now go deeper into my story, you should not think that my parents are guilty or so. That's not the case. I have forgiven everything. Yeah, there were some failure and I have forgiven because I know they were very unconscious this time and didn't knew about and their parents were in the Second World War. As children when they were young they are not that old they were my mother my grandmother now is 90 years old so she was a small girl when she was in the second world war and she built up everything she has now she built she started from the very beginning she had nothing after the war and she built up everything with my grandfather together so therefore they didn't have the best life and therefore they couldn't upbring their children and you know, from generation to, to generation, upbringing becomes better. Let's look forward to it. But there was this darkness when I was so young. There was this darkness deep inside of me. And when I grew older, so in direction of the youth, the adolescent, I felt something more that there is kind of a voice uh, it's not a voice it's not that I hear s voices or sounds on my head like in psychological diseases I mean there was this thought this unconscious thought and it became more conscious and it wanted to say me something and it says you're not good enough and everything I did and everything I started it was there it was more and more clear, but it was not totally clear. I was not conscious about it. I couldn't see why I have blockades here and there, why this doesn't work and why that doesn't work. And I wondered why. It was not totally clear. I felt that there is something which blocks me, but psychological knowledge was not that developed so that everyone knows about it and I couldn't find out what's the problem behind. And it is not that like now that there are school psychologists or so, it was not the case in my time in the 1990s and in the early 2000 years, there was not a concrete or direct help. And I think 
many people have this unconscious thoughts, especially that basic thought which always says you're not good enough, but it says it in several ways. It also says it like you are not beautiful enough. You know, when you see young people taking tons of makeup because they think they are not beautiful enough. And in things you do, it always says you don't do it good enough. And, you know, there's something in you always striving for perfection. And if it is not perfect enough, then you fall in melancholy and give up. And this again and again, you try this and that in your life. And again and again, you break things up because you think you're not good enough or you think, You're not beautiful enough, you're not, you know. But this unconscious thought also causes that you blame the same thing to others too when you are together with others and and this thought is not just making life a burden for you, it also you also project it to others. You say to friends or to your partner or so that they are not good enough in what they do. And so relationships also suffer from that. But many people have this thought. It's not like when you now agree and say, yeah, I, I also have kind of like that negative thoughts. But all the other peoples have that too. Some more conscious, some more unconscious. But it's always working in us. It's It comes from the thinker, from the ego. We now, today, know that. And that this kind of overthinking is, is not healthy, it's not useful, it's destructive and should be abolished. But normally, most of the people don't know how to handle that negative thoughts. And I also didn't know all my life. And I was still that depressed person, that melancholic personality. For years, I was so quiet and I thought I was an introvert or so I, I found boxes to put my behavior into it when I read about psychology and you know psychological types and then there is an extroverted introverted and I tried to to put myself into boxes on the one hand that was good to find out what's wrong with me or what's actually not wrong because I thought I'm not good enough because The first thing was, it was kind of a trap. First thing was, it says to me, I'm not good enough. And this thought made me very quiet and very shy because I don't want it to hide. I, I wanted to hide. I don't want it to show. I, at this time, I could never do such videos or so. I wanted to hide from the world because I was not good enough. And then the next step is because I was so shy, it tortured me even more and told You are such a shy person and shy persons are not good enough. And it made me, and it produced even less self-confidence. It was like a downward spiral. And I want to share this with you because maybe this could help some which also suffer from downward spirals like this or several ones from negative thoughts or from overthinking, from mind wandering, from, you know, oh, what's this channel about? And this shy behavior brought me in kind of an isolation. And this time I haven't known anything about introverts. I read it later and I got that insight. But it When I was young, um, when I was an adolescent or when I started a training uh, with 16 or 17 years, it was still very dark inside of me. I was not feeling so much. I just felt that I, I was lonely because I left my parents' house for that training and I lived in another city and uh, it was a town. And I didn't know anyone there and just lived there to work. 
and it, I felt very lonely and but I took a boyfriend and and you know what people do when they feel lonely they they take a boyfriend or girlfriend whatever but it also was there this, this darkness the boyfriend couldn't do anything against it it was a good time with him I, I don't want to say that that it, it was he was a nice guy it was really good but there was still that emptiness and that darkness and I thought to having a boyfriend would make anything better but the opposite was the case sometimes after a good evening with him and I tried to sleep and Sometimes in the middle of the night, I woke up and I felt this emptiness. This was very, yeah, I felt this darkness in its full size. This was about the age of 20. I absolutely felt suffering and I don't know why, because I had everything I wanted. I had a driving license and a car small polo and I had a boyfriend and actually I had everything what people say you must have that you have a good life but I was not happy and I was striving for more I wanted a bigger car and I searched for a better job I wanted to earn more money because I wanted better stuff and I changed also the boyfriend because I thought I must have someone better. But I was still not happy then. It was just that I thought it would make life better when I changed the boyfriend. But you can't just love when you find the love inside of you. It's not, you can change how often you want. You will not find the love this way. Yes, the first time when you are in crush, it feels like love. But when the crush is over, you know, I said it all in, in the video about love. It's just an illusion that crush, it's, the deeper love is still missing. And after a few weeks or months or so, if you have luck, it holds for a longer period, like several years or decades. But it doesn't bring you the happiness I was still striving for, for more I was I think I was I had to work harder I had to earn more money I wanted bigger cars then because I, I hoped to make my life better than I hoped when I have bigger cars then one day I will be happy and when I have a good career and I reach something and I, have, I hoped I, I could be happy then and I, I wanted to, to go to the police. So as an officer, I would have a good job with safe money. It's not that high money because I wasn't in college and I couldn't get such a high grade. But it was a very safe job with, with relative good money. But at this time, I was already ill. I, I have a chronic disease. I got it at my first training and so the police rejected me because they said I'm I'm not healthy enough to go to the police to join the police so they didn't want me but I should go a little deeper in, in that chronic disease it's uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis This disease, the thyroid, is not normally ill. Actually, it is not ill. The problem at this disease is that your immune system works wrong and believes that your thyroid is something strange, is kind of a virus, and it attacks this organ. It attacks the thyroid because the immune system things wrong about it. Nowadays, they say it's a very psychosomatical disease. 
and it shows up that there's a fight inside of you. It is on a bodily level, but actually there is something fighting inside of you in your soul and you can't see that. And because you can't see that, it manifests in your body to show up that there is something, there is a fight in the soul that you can better see it, it manifests to the body. So this is said through psychological or not uh, through psychosomatical disease. That means it has to do with the psyche on the one hand and soma is the body. And so that means that psyche and body here works together and there is something wrong in the psyche. But instead of that, a psychological disease appears, a bodily disease appears. And yes, at this time at the training, I should go more in that training before continuing to the next steps. In that training, I was still in that melancholic behavior or personality. Actually, I didn't want to go to that training. I didn't like that job. But I know I have to go there for three years because I needed a certificate. Without any certificate, you can't get good money. You first need a training or you have to study. And this is kind of, a, you know, not like a full study. It's like you work somewhere, but you also have to visit a school at the same time. This was a, this is a dual training. So it's not like studying and just sitting in the university. It's, it's half and half you work and get a little money and at the same time you have to go to a school which prepares you for a profession. I wanted to become a businesswoman that time. I actually didn't want but I didn't know what to work and I didn't know what was my path and my way and therefore I decided just to take a basic job just to take a basic training. I just needed anything as a start and I didn't know what to choose and therefore I decided okay business is okay and therefore I studied that thing but I was really unlucky all the time the darkness also was there but I was at school it was better but then in this training I was really unhappy I started to smoke even more and I, I was driving there every day and with, with cigarette in the mouth during driving because I was so unconscious and I don't know I didn't want to go there and I think on an unconscious level destroying myself through cigarettes destroying in, in a slow way killing me in a slow way and also in this age of adolescence I had my first conscious suicide thoughts because this life was really so I I didn't like that I, I had no sense I had no purpose I, I didn't know why I was there and I just know that I have to do any job to reach any targets but actually I didn't want to be in that job so and this let my unconscious negative thoughts even grow and let me more and more in suicide force. Even if I had everything, I had this boyfriend and a car and, you know. Okay, and I already said about the police stuff that I wanted to earn more and, you know. But then a friend of mine said, why don't you go to the army? Maybe they take you. And actually, the army is better than the police it was in his opinion, because he thought he said that at the army, I can do the same job I already do. I can start with a higher grade because when I have already a job, when I have a profession, I don't start at a private. I can start a little bit higher in the army. So and then I thought, OK, and then I tried to join the army and they took me. And I was very happy that this was, was the, I, I can't remember, but I think this was the 
first day in my life when I was happy since about 15 or 20 years. So I became unhappy or unlucky, I don't know, from the age of six or seven and or eight, I, I don't know. And suddenly with 22, after all the tests in the army, they said they'd take me. And I was so happy and so glad that they, that they take me. And at the same time, I also got a positive message from another job. And I remember I had to take, I had to make a decision. It was not easy to say army or the other job. But I let the army win because there was more money, more safety, more fun. And what I was striving for earlier, I also hope that at the army, I can have fun. I can have, you know, doing sports in your work time, getting paid for doing sports. Other people do sports in the free time, but you can do it at your work time. I was very lucky about that. I was not that sporty this time, but I but I started to train that a lot before I then joined the army so that I can handle all this. And it was a good training for me. Also for my soul, which was so melancholic, the sports was not that bad against depression and so. But there was still this darkness, even when I was happy there. But there was still this darkness all behind it. And I earned that money and I already had saved money before. And after a short time in the army, I could earn the rest so that I could buy another car and a bigger car. And, you know, cars grew bigger. And I was very proud to have them every time. And I got, you know, grade and a higher grade, a higher rank on my shoulder every year. And I was so proud. There was also everyday tr trouble with people, with other soldiers, you know, from everyday life, with colonels or with other officers which are higher, but even with people which are the same rank as you are. Some were always striving for or searching for trouble and, you know, it was not that easy. But I was relative happy because I had more money and could buy more things. But there was still this darkness inside of me, deep inside of me. And one day I reached my rank as a sergeant, which was the highest target in the army, which I could reach without college. And actually, I should enjoy this day but at this day, when I really reached everything which I could have at this time, I was not happy. I had an Audi A6. In the age of 25, I could buy an Audi A6. Who can? This is, that's not normal. Normally, people are striving for having children and investing their money in the children and so but I was striving for career and saving money. And one day I, I bought this Audi and I got this rank as, as a sergeant and, and I had everything what I want. But I was feeling that there is still no happiness inside of me. And I was considering what else then, what I, I wanted to reach more than I should go to college and study and become an officer. I must, I must go higher. I must go the next steps. So my striving was not fulfilled. I, I needed more. But there was this darkness inside of me which says it will never end. It will never end. Even I knew when I would study and become an officer and one day I would reach the highest rank I can reach, I would still be unhappy. I knew that. The darkness was still there. And I got a depression then at, uh, at the army. And they throwed me out because of this. 
but it was not wrong. It was okay for me. I didn't fight to, that I could stay. Some soldiers, some friends of me said that I should fight and that I, you know, I had an endurance that time and I could take this endurance to take a lawyer and to fight for the right to stay in the army and, you know, but I didn't want. There was something in me and I felt it was right to leave the army. That My time is over there and I didn't want to continue. There was something in me which says that's not my way. I could feel it more than earlier. But I didn't know what's my way. That was the problem. I didn't know what to do then, what to do else. Instead of searching for money, searching for cars and so. But that was all not the right thing. But what else? Okay, but when I left the army, I and I didn't know what to do. So I continued my plans. I visited college and things happened there. Answers came and that was good. It was the very first time when I got answers, when I found more and more what is my way. Actually, it was planned after the army to become an engineer. I wanted to study in the electronic branch and I wanted to become an engineer. That was my plan because I knew that as an engineer, you can get lots of money. This was still the same target I had before. I wanted that money. I also loved technical things these days. Today, as you know, I often say digital media is not so good. And, you know, and I just use technical things because to record these videos. And I more and more try to improve to buy new stuff that I have that I can produce better quality when you hear my videos or watch my videos you can see and hear it in a better quality therefore I buy such things but generally I'm no more a fan of that because I know this all makes not lucky this all brings not happiness and but I was on my path to happiness still but I fought the wrong thing but then at this college things happened and things changed and I found out different targets and I totally changed and later took another study branch, which was actually not planned, but which suddenly came out of my heart because my heart said what to do. But first of all, I had to find my heart. I had to find what's inside of me, what is really my way, how can I find it and not to go again and again in their, in their trap, just striving for money and at the end fall down in a burnout or so. At the college, I was also not that lucky. I was, at the beginning, I was happy to be there because I love to be at school because, you know, when I was younger at elementary school, I also loved it. And yes, it was a good feeling there, but it was very difficult and it was not that lucky, but I liked that challenge a bit. So it was not that bad, like being in the army or in jobs I didn't like. So I felt a little better then, but I was tired. I was tired all the time. And I wanted, because we had so much to learn and I had an endless to-do list every day, what I had to learn besides visiting the school. So that means I visited that school from eight o'clock until sometimes until five in the afternoon. So it was kind of like a full-time job to go to college and after that homework. So the full day was full of school and it was a burden that was, there was no free time. It was really hard this time. And I always was tired then. And I wanted to find tricks to overcome this. And then I started to search in neuroscience. Neuroscience is not part of the college, but I was interested in neuroscience because I got the idea to think about it. How can I get most use of the brain? 
how can I learn as much as possible in less time? I was searching for brain efficacy. I was searching for learning more, but with less effort. And therefore, it was interesting to learn about the brain through neuroscience, how it works, and you know that you can make the best of it. But I also found learning methods which helped to make it easier to learn more in shorter time. But I was still tired. I was still tired and, and I didn't know how to end this. And I know that being tired is also a symptom of my disease, of my chronic disease. Maybe I can't abolish it for the rest of my life. But for this time, I had time pressure from that high school, from that college. And they wanted me to learn lots of stuff in a very short time. And therefore, I needed solutions for that, even if I was very tired. OK, of course, there was solution. Solution was drink, drinking more Coke to have this caffeine to become, you know, and energy drinks and all that stuff. But I was still tired and all that substances didn't work all the time. Because, as you know, the body is also becomes also immune against when you drink too much caffeine one day it will not work anymore i had to find other solutions and because i think and and because i thought that my chronic disease maybe is the cause that i am so tired all the time i tried to find solutions that maybe if it is a chronic disease, it, never it nevertheless could be healed. Because as you know, there are some cases when people are healed from chronic, from chronic disease. And there are even worse chronic disease. With my chronic disease, Hashimoto, Toriorditis, you can live all your life very good. There is, you just take your pills and everything is fine it's not that bad so okay sometimes you have here and there little problems or symptoms when there is pain in in your hand or so suddenly or so but it's not all the time you can live you can live relative good with that disease but that's not an answer for me when you are always tired all the time and i wanted to abolish that disease so that I'm not tired all the time. I don't want to be tired the, for the rest of my life. And therefore, I was more interested in biology and medicine because I wanted to find answers there. But I also couldn't find answers in biology and the normal medical knowledge. But then I searched for alternative medicine I could find some aspects there, but the main aspect which really impressed me and which said something to me is the aspect with psychosomatic, which I already said. For my disease, it brought me answers. It could explain why I have this disease and why things are as they are. It couldn't abolish the disease, but to know about it could me give the first answers. And that was good. It was good. And then I wanted to go deeper. And psychosomatic brought me to the insight that there is not just a body where we see the results of our problems, but there is also a soul. I have never considered any soul before. I just thought it's kind of a religious thing. What just, you know, it is said that people have, but because you can't see it, I, I was not thinking about it. I was thinking that such thing doesn't exist. But suddenly I was sure that the soul exists and it was different. And then a journey began because I wanted to know more. I wanted to know when there is a soul and when there is this disease. And I asked myself, why do I have that disease? 
And that question brought me to the main and basic question, which, which is actually the only question you have to ask yourself in your life. It's the only important question. All other questions appear later or besides that and are more or less important, but not that important. And that one question is, who are you? I ask myself, who am I? Who am I really? Who are you really? And there was nothing. There was kind of an emptiness still and then darkness and the darkness. And I don't know, and I didn't know what to do then, but I felt that there was something. But this, first of all, brought me to thoughts about my childhood when everything was okay. And this time, before I was seven or eight, when everything really was fine, I considered was, what was there, what suddenly when school began, disappeared. And I asked myself, what were my hobbies when I was young? And what did I love? And, you know, and I tried to remember things to find myself because suddenly I knew that from school, from upbringing, from education, from the society, and today from social media, they all say things to you and they say what you have to be and what you have to strive for and what you need and what should be important for you, but it's actually not important or you you don't have to strive for such things because they don't make you happy. They are not belonging to you. And I wanted to know then what really belongs to me, what fits to me, what what is, you know, what is this Rebecca about? They gave me the name, even the name is, is not, you know, when you consider it's, it's all on the surface. They say you are this and that and you have to be this and that and you're not good enough and you must become better, you must improve and you give effort all the time because people say you have to and as you now are, you're not good, you must develop and you, you develop, but you develop in wrong ways. You develop to strive for money and for other stuff. And at the end, you are still not lucky. Even if you have the best partner and the best car, you're not lucky. There's something still inside of you which causes inner conflicts. And also when you have inner conflicts, it also, even if, you, if they are unconscious, it, does, it doesn't make any difference if they are conscious or unconscious. There are inner conflicts, that's a fact. And because of this, you also have outer conflicts with others at work, with colleagues, and in your partnership. And I could found all this and all that illusion which the ego causes. I was in that illusion. And the ego is filled up with all that knowledge which we are taught at school and which we are taught at upbringing but as you know I said in the beginning they are not guilty they didn't know better but the problem is from generation to generation they give you kind of a wrong knowledge and many people are not lucky with that many people are not happy and they don't find what's behind all this and that is all on the surface and and there is something behind. There is something deeper, which is interesting, but which seems dark for us when we just live on the surface. But I wanted to bring light into the darkness. I wanted to change things. And at this time at the college, I read lots of books in my free time. And suddenly I was not more so tired so it was not a disease which made me tired. It was more or less that even on college, 
I went the wrong way, even if it felt a little better, but it was just the normal thing. You are in the system, you are a part of the system and you get more knowledge. And after that, another job, a better job, but it was still the same way. And that was what made me tired. My soul didn't want to go the same way again and again. It wanted to save me from that. Therefore things changed. And I had to change things. I had to go with it. Whatever was driving me at this time drove me to read more books. And suddenly I was not so tired like reading that books from school. I was interested and that interest let me stay awake. Day and night I was reading. I was not sleeping so much. I was I couldn't stop to read. I wanted to know more about philosophy, psychology, and what's all behind that. I even read the Bible because I didn't understand it earlier. But from the understanding of psychology and philosophy, I could try to see the Bible from a new perspective, from, from a different perspective. Not that it's just any story from any people which lived 2000 years ago or earlier. This would be boring for us when it's just an historical thing, you know, then the Bible is just an historical book and has no sense. But to really use it for senses, for, for a purpose, I had to change my view. And there was one person on my way which helped me to change that view and which helped me to read the Bible, and it was no priest, fortunately, <laughs> and it was no monk, it was no person from any religion. It was my German teacher at college. Our German teacher taught us how to interpret figurative language. He told us how to interpret poems, and that, you know, Picturative language there, which always says something behind. On the surface, something happens in a poem, and other stuff, things happen in, in a story or in a poem, but you can't see behind. There is a deeper meaning of all these stories. And I couldn't grasp that all my life. In the normal school, in that 10 years, they haven't told us anything about how to understand the poems. But this guy told me how to understand this figurative language. And with that knowledge, I could understand the Bible and the stories, what Jesus told, and, you know, also stories from Old Testament. When I see it, that is not meant in that historical ways, but to interpret it, to use the Bible for us now, for everyday life. That's the only sense to use it, actually. But some priests or some people from church just think that's an historical thing and, you know, and they just love that Jesus, which is 2000 years dead, and okay, that's okay, it's nothing wrong with them, but I don't know if did I don't know if this really brings someone further. You know, when you don't see the Bible as a psychological thing and which maybe can help people when you interpret it in the right ways. But okay, I don't go in detail now because I don't have any example. But as you know from my other videos, in the case a Bible verse is fitting to the topic, I sometimes take a Bible verse and quote it, you know, for and therefore, maybe this is what my channel makes special because I use it for psychological things to really help people with the Bible, not just to, to tell any history that, you know, people are sleeping out or becoming bored from Bible as I also was bored in church earlier when I was a child and didn't want to go to church. Of course, because... When they just tell it as a story, it's a good story for children to fall in sleep, but it doesn't really help anyone. And so I learned more and more. 
and more and more illusions fall down, fall away. It was path breaking my life then. It was really from day to day, I learned more and I used it in everyday life. I had very good experience. I learned more people. I also lost old friends, which didn't go my way. I felt sometimes very, very lonely, but I got more and more new friends, which don't reject me that I'm different now. And, you know, old friends, normally people don't like that you change. And when you really change and break out of this normal way of life, then people won't like you anymore before because you are so different and they want it, that you stay the same person you have been. And they want you actually on an unconscious level. They don't want that you are still melancholic and still suffering, but they just know you that way. And when you find a solution to, to come out, that's too much for them. That's too much for their mind. They can't understand. And then you must let them go. But new ones will come. New ones will follow. Just trust and follow your way. Listen to your heart. And try to find your higher self. And I love to learn about that higher self. That which psychology named self that's the opposite of the ego that is actually your bigger part and your essential part of the soul actually the higher self is your true self i want to say the whole thing now here again i told it in other videos too we focus this life which is actually just a small part of a bigger thing and all religions and all philosophies say the same thing that there's a soul which lives i don't know how long let's say endless and this life here in the body in that material world is just a piece of 100 years or mo most cases 80 years i don't know let's say around 100 years there are also cases of over 100 so i say around 100 years we take it so serious to earn so much stuff for that 100 years. But at the end of that 100 years, we lose everything when we die. So why care for having more and more and more? It's the ego which here appears. Normally, you are just consciousness. You are this higher self, which suddenly makes a human experience you can also consider rebirth, that, it's re that is, it has a rebirth after the death and again makes that appearance and can't break out. But then one day there is a breakout and you can go to that endless, to that just be consciousness without that ego. When you leave this illusion one day, but even if you don't believe in rebirth you can see it as a timeline as i explained in that other video that is whatever path or religion you prefer it's the same thing the problem is we are here now in this dimension for that hundred years about and there is something before and after and both we are not in that body and we don't need all that material stuff to protect us, to protect the body and, you know, to feed the body and all that stuff. We don't need that normally. It's just for that hundred years, but we take that so serious to collect all that stuff and to have all this stuff, to have your fun and all the time, you know, and we don't prepare for the time which comes after this. And this is actually, it's nothing new what I say here. Actually, all religions and there were also silly philosophies but the good philosophies also say that there is something behind this life there is something after but we don't know what some try to explain but most people focus that there is something more and they just focus to have here now a good life but this will not bring them for what comes next just holding on to all this stuff will 
bring you a very hard death because the more stuff you have, the more you have to let go at the end. And this is hard. This is really hard. And therefore, it is good to practice now as soon as possible to let go things and to let go stuff. And I found out about this knowledge. And again and again, I could not just find it in Bible and then religion. I, can't, I could find evidence because when it is the same, I find I found same aspects in lots of philosophies and in most religions. And there are basic aspects which are the same and which are and which you can find in every religion and this was essential for me and therefore this is also the reason why this channel here exists and why I want to share these insights with you and these insights gave me more and more peace to know about there's something bigger and this here this life is just a small a very very small part of a huge thing and so it's not so important to have all that stuff which actually doesn't make happy. And why has it done, and why did it, didn't it bring happiness to me? I could also find this solution. Of course, there was something inside my soul which says it doesn't bring happiness. Because the true happiness you, you just can find when you find your higher self. Because the higher self is connected with what people also call God. The higher self, also psychology says that, Carl Jung says that in the higher self is the place where you can meet God when you are in deep meditation. This goes through the higher self. But first you have to explore your higher self. Most people don't even know that such thing exists. They even don't consider that they have the ego and they are just in the ego. First of all, you must find that you must find out that you have this ego and it's active most of the time and causes all that negative thoughts. The second step is that you must know about there's something else besides the ego, which is much bigger, and that's the higher self. And when you know this then you can go forward and be open to whatever comes and what religions and philosophies have talked about. But first of all, you don't have to believe anything. You don't have to believe there is a God or so, because when you try to believe in God without the self, you are in thinking, you are just an ego, and ego is just in thinking, and thinking is not loving, it's not from the heart, thinking is just on a cognitive level and from thinking you can never grasp God because when you think there's a God you produce a mental illness in mental image mental illness also <laughs> okay um, you produce a mental image of God you have an image of God in you know in with your inner eyes and you just consider God but that's not God. And therefore also the problems between the religions appear when they say my God and your God, because it comes from the mind, which, also, which always produces separation. And that's the problem. To really find God, you first have to find yourself. You first have to overcome the ego and to find yourself, your true self. And that you can find through the basic questions the basic, the actually basic question, which is, who are you really? But it doesn't appear then when you ask the question at the same moment, maybe for some people, um, spontaneous enlightenment appears and they directly are freed from ego and higher self is present. But for most people, and also for me, it's a process. I don't know, maybe it's a lifelong process or I would say it takes years. I don't know. It, I started it about, I think, seven years or so ago. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, the first depression was about 10 years ago. And then I 
took that wrong treatment from the normal medicine, you know, like pills and so. But then later I started with meditation and meditation also is a friend on your way. It's not just considering and thinking back to your childhood and what was your hobbies. So this is also just on the surface, but it can help maybe to find your higher self. But it, this is not in every case. And this is also just through thinking. You also have to consider that there is still the ego, which is the thinker in us. As you know, from neuroscience, uh, Gerhard Roth, for example, a modern uh, German neuroscientist says that the ego, the thinking is located in the neocortex. Actually, all neuroscientists, not neuroscientists say that the ego is, or the thinking is located in the neocortex, in the analytic part of the brain. That's nothing new or so. But the point is you must overcome this and their meditation will help you to calm down that overactive ego, which is always thinking and thinking and never want to stop with thinking and and uh, blah, blah. You know, when there is uh, people try to run away from their thinking through talking with others, but it's the same thing. It's just a loud thinking. So it's, it doesn't really solve the problem. Solving the problem is about meditation and to calm down the thinker. And so just actually meditation can bring you to your higher self. And I found that out and I was so astounded about that inside. Oh, why haven't I meditated before? Why don't they learn meditation at school? Why couldn't they teach? Why couldn't they teach us this, that at school? So I also made whole videos about that problem. I wish that if there is any rebirth or so for my next life, I would wish that I learn more essential stuff at school. So to not go in the same traps that I just learned that I have to learn, that I have to earn money and have to reach things to have a good life. And actually then I must see that this doesn't make lucky and I need bigger things and better things. And again and again, I must see it's it's not bringing happiness. And and I, I'm always sad and, and I don't want to be. So the only way out of that circle of sadness and of unhappiness is to find out about that higher self. And that's actually the only thing. And there is just this basic question what you have to ask, and this is, who are you really? And that's the only question. And then there's the next, so again, I, I want to count it in three steps. First thing is, there is an ego, and you have an ego, even if you think you have not, because you are such a good person, everyone has it, that's a fact. Read Sigmund Freud, or, you know, everyone has it, and it blocks and it makes all our problems. And the second thing is find your higher self. It will solve your problems. And the third thing is forgive. Don't fall in that trap that your ego, that your ego comes back and says, why haven't they told me about the higher self and about meditation and all that stuff? And why have I suffered all that years and don't make the people guilty? They don't know better. That's the, the third point. And with this, I want to say, I want to tell the end of my story. I wanted to know more about that. And after college, I decided to study. Actually, I wanted to study philosophy or psychology, but I was not glad with that. I thought, okay, psychology is not an option because it's clinical psychology. And you just learn about which mental diseases exists and which pills you have to give for which disease so this was not an option to know because i don't want to bring wrong things to people and wrong things is to give them pills for me from my experience maybe in some very very hard mental diseases pills are necessary i don't want to reject this but for me for just depressions and burnouts it's not necessary 
because sometimes depressions lead you to a better thing, to a higher thing. Like in my story, and later I read there are there were other people which had a depression and which led them to a better life, to better insights, to create a good life. So then there was still philosophy and I was also not glad with philosophy because I know nowadays philosophy is not so recognized. And I thought when I studied philosophy, what to work after that with philosophy? I didn't know what to work then, what, which job can I apply with philosophy nowadays? I think 2000 years ago, no problem. Philosophers was recognized, but nowadays, uh, not so easy. So therefore, I don't want to study philosophy, but I tried to connect it a little bit. Actually, I want to do something in the social sector. And therefore, I wanted to study, I don't know how it is in English, but it's kind of social. I wanted to become a social worker. And there's also such a study branch, but this is very full and people love that. And I couldn't find a place. And so I went, I went to the job center and asked, can you give me an advice? I wanted to, I want, I wanted to study. I want to become a social worker, but, but it's full, and you know, I can't get a place there. What to do? And they said to me, study educational science. At educational science, it's actually similar. You are, it's more scientific, but at the end, you can also work a, as a social worker if you like. And so I studied this and I found additionally out that at educational science, I can choose subjects. I have the main branch, the main study, this is educational science, but I also have additional subjects which I can choose in that study branch. And I chose psychology and philosophy. And so I could study what I actually want, but at the same time, I got a certificate with which I can work as a pedagogue or as, you know, as a lecturer. And, you know, that's, that's very good. So I can have a good job a normal job. And at the same time, I could get all the insights from philosophy and psychology. And at the end, I really applied for such jobs. I now am a teacher in two high schools and from all my personal insights, and from all my additional knowledge from philosophy and psychology, I now tell the people and try to help the people to really find the truths, find yourself, but not from a religious perspective, but more from a scientific perspective. And this is what I also do in my free time here on this channel. And I really hope that it can help people. And if you have any questions or so, please let me know. I want really to help. I, I don't do this for money or so I, I really want to help people and therefore I'm here and you know I'm on the path to enlightenment and I want to take you with me I want that you all find your higher self and I want to find and I want that you all meditate more and can see that inner peace and then not just that inner peace and you go further through that inner peace and you one day can reach enlightenment and you one day will be able to switch your so to switch off your mind whenever you want and this is my target and I also want to take you with me on this journey if you are still here still listening to that and are still interested please follow me therefore I produce the no mind channel on YouTube I hope you had a good time here today with now my insights and I, I think I have not forgotten anything but it doesn't matter then another video will appear so i wish you have a nice day see you next time bye